on this episode of Coding with Kate, I wanted to give you all a tip, a technique, and an example for coding. So the other day I was studying for the CCA and I had a little bit of a breakthrough, I guess. I was doing a case study and that just threw me, but I worked through it, I figured it out, and it was great and I wanted to share that experience with you in the form of tip, technique, example. So the tip I want to give everyone is when you are practicing, studying, whatever, when you get to a point where the list of diagnoses or the list of procedures and you just have to go and find them in the book, when that is just too boring, move on to the case studies. That is at the point where you're really going to be actively using everything you've learned in more of a real life setting. Case studies are great, and especially if you have a clinical workbook that has many, many case studies, it's going to cover a wide variety of body systems, different types of procedures, and they will often give you the diagnosis and the op report procedure. So you would have to find both the diagnosis code and the procedure code. So you're actually doing them both together and to see how that all works and all the information that is needed to find those codes. So the tip is to move on to case studies and to work through case studies. My technique is to draw out the procedure or the body part they're working on if it's just so complicated or confusing and you have no idea what they're talking about and you can't find a video that properly visualizes it, make your drawing and work through step by step as you're reading through it and drawing out what's happening and you will have a better understanding of how it works. Finally, the example. This one's a little bit long, but I want you all to see what I mean by it was complicated and I was confused and how drawing it out really helps. So bear with me as I read through it. It is long. And then also, I suggest if you don't have a whiteboard or anything like that, you can go to any hardware store or even Habitat for Humanity has the ReStore if you have one of those in your city. Look for plexiglass and then just tape a sheet of paper behind it so then it acts like a dry erase board because then you can just easily wipe off everything you've written. You're not wasting paper. So this is a great tool and I know in some previous videos you've seen I'm using this. It's just plexiglass and a light colored sheet of paper behind it. So the example. I'm going to skip the diagnosis and the any history and I'm going to go right into the procedure. The procedures that were done is an exploratory laparotomy, sigmoid colectomy, extended right hemicolectomy, permanent colostomy. Now we all know, don't just code off of what that first procedure line says, because it may be a little different once you actually read through. And especially with PCS coding, you have to read through because you need more information. The procedure description says the patient's abdomen was then prepped and draped in the standard surgical fashion. A midline laparotomy incision was made from just around the umbilicus to the pubic synthesis. The midline of the fascia was divided and the abdomen was entered. With exploration of the abdomen, extensive diverticular disease of the distal sigmoid colon was noted. First order of business was to mobilize the sigmoid colon for sigmoid colectomy. The left ureter was identified and was far from the area of the sigmoid colon. The sigmoid colon was mobilized laterally to include the area of the diverticulitis. The sigmoid colon was mobilized down to the peritoneal reflection. The medial aspect of the sigmoid colon was also mobilized. The colon was then completely mobilized. A point of transection was chosen at the proximal sigmoid colon. The mesentery was then taken down across the sacrum. The vessels were tied with 2-0 silk sutures. The sigmoid colon was mobilized down to the proximal rectum. Once the proximal rectum was identified, the sigmoid colon was again transected, this time using a contour ethicon stapler with a blue load. Both the right and left readers were identified prior to the transection of the sigmoid colon. A 3 0 proline suture was then taped to either edge of the rectal staple line. The right colon was then inspected. Multiple perforations with sites of deserosalization with exposed mucosa were identified in the right colon. The right colon was mobilized by taking down the white line of told T O L D T all the way up to and including the hepatic flexure. The omentum was taken off to uh, the omentum was taken off the transverse colon with electrocautery. Once the colon was completely mobilized and became a medial structure, a terminal ilium was transected, this time also using a 45 millimeter GIA stapler with a blue load. A point of transection was chosen in the mid-transverse colon, just proximal to the middle colon artery, where the last site of deserosalization was identified. The mid-transverse colon was divided with a GIA 45 millimeter, millimeter stapler with a blue load. The mesentery to the right colon and transverse colon were then taken down with peen clamps, P-E-A-N, 
and tied with two dash of silk sutures, the specimen was then passed off the field. The abdomen was then irrigated, hemostasis was assured, the il iliocolic anastomosis was then created between the terminal ilium and the mid-transverse colon. The bowels were positioned to lie alongside each other and side-to-side -side functional end-to-end -end anastomosis was created using a 45 millimeter GIA stapler with a blue load. The enterostomias were then closed together with a running 3 OPDS suture followed by interrupted 3 OGI silks in a Lembert fashion. A stitch was placed at the crotch of each of the bowel connections, a finger was palpitated at the anastomosis and it was widely patent. Mesenteric defect was then closed using a 3 O vicral suture in a running fashion. Attention was then turned toward formation of the end of descending colostomy. The descending colon had already been mobilized enough to make it to the anterior abdominal wall without any difficulty. A point on the anterior abdominal wall on the left-hand side, just below the umbilicus, was chosen for the colostomy. A small 1.5 to 2 centimeter circular incision was made on the anterior abdominal wall midway through the rectus muscle. The anterior fascia was divided in a cruciate fashion. The rectus muscles were split and two fingers were palpitated through the defect into, into the abdominal cavity. The descending colon was then grasped with an Alice clamp and passed through the defect and exteriorized. There was no tension on the colon. On the undersurface of the peritoneum, the colon was tagged with three OGI silk sutures, 32. A midline fascial incision was then closed with a running number one loop, PDS, 32. The surgical incision was then irrigated with copious saline. The skin was then closed with surgical staples. The, os the ostomy was then matured by removing the staple line and sewing the ostomy in place with three O vital sutures. The sutures were sewn in circumferentially, and ostomy appliance was applied. So dressing dressings were applied, and the patient was awakened from general anesthesia and transported to the recovery room in stable condition. So, when I was reading through this, I was getting confused halfway through. When they were talking about mobilizing the sigmoid colon and transecting at the proximal rectum, and then when they went over to the transverse colon, I was confused. I had no idea what they were talking about, how they started from the sigmoid colon and then they jumped over to the transverse colon. I was confused. So the first thing I had to do was review the anatomy of the large intestine because I was confused that I was getting them all mixed up. So I went to check and once I had that image, I'll show it on the screen, I drew it out on my dry erase board. So this was my general picture here. We have our rectum on the bottom and then we have our ilium or the very end of the small intestine which would start our large intestine. And then we have our ascending colon, transverse colon, and our sigmoid colon. Those are the general areas that we're talking about. And what also threw me is they use the term right colon so that is what really threw me off because I didn't know how we started from doing surgery on the very end of the large intestine and moving to the right colon. Why were we jumping? And that's where I got confused. I didn't know, do I have it wrong or backwards? Either way, so I drew this out. And then as I read through it, I'll just do snippets here and there, and then I'll make my notation so then we can figure out what's going on. When they say they mobilized the colon, I figured out that actually meant cutting out the connective tissue to free the colon, because it doesn't just like flop around and hang out there. It has some connective tissue that connects it to the abdominal wall, the peritoneum, etc. So mobilizing the colon is just cutting it free from that. That also threw me off. So they say, so the sigmoid colon was mobilized. A point of transection was chosen at the proximal sigmoid colon. So we know that with directions. When they say proximal, they're talking about closer to, not so much the spine, but towards the center of the body. So we know that the rectum is further away. That would be the distal end of the sigmoid colon. The proximal end of the sigmoid colon would be, I forgot the descending colon, oops. So the sigmoid colon is like right in here. And then we have our rectum. So the proximal end would be the one closer to the descending colon. So they did their transection there. So then it says, the sigmoid colon was mobilized down to the proximal rectum. So now we're getting to the top of the rectum, bottom of the sigmoid colon. And then the sigmoid colon was then again transected. So they cut here. So we know that that part has then been taken out or cut out. Then they move to the right colon. So they move to the opposite side. The right colon, our ascending colon, because that's on the right side of the body. So they mobilized the ascending colon 
Then it says the terminal ilium was transected. The terminal ilium, that's the end of the small intestine and the beginning of the large intestine, so they made a cut right there. And then a point of transection was chosen in the mid transverse colon, so we know that the top part is the transverse colon, mid is somewhere along the midline, so they cut there. And then the specimen was taken off the field, so we know they cut this section off. So that is what we have at the moment. So we have one piece of colon hanging out over here that's just not connected to anything, no other body structure. Then they talk about connecting them all. So, the ileocolic anastomosis was created between the terminal ileum and the mid transverse colon. So they connected this section with this section. So they connected it to make it one. So the small intestine empties out into the end of the transverse colon down to the descending colon. But then they still have to find another ending for it because we can't just have all of the contents of that spilling out into the abdominal cavity. So we have the end descending colostomy, so the end of the descending colon, which goes out to make the colostomy. So they're talking about the descending colon has already been mobilized to make it to the anterior abdominal wall, so it is able to move to the abdominal wall. And then they start talking about making the stomy, the colostomy, etc. So this section then connects to outside of the, the abdomen. So it goes to a colostomy bag. So this is what we have. And then we can make it a little bit easier to see. So stomach to end of the transverse colon, to the descending colon, and then to outside of the body. That is what all of that meant. And I was confused, but now after drawing it, it makes a lot more sense. And when I read it back, I'm wondering how could I not figure that out. So with the PCS coding of it, it was much easier to understand what was being bypassed to what, and how many codes are needed. I believe two codes are needed, one bypass code from ileum or small intestine to the transverse colon, and then another bypass code from descending colon to cutaneous or outside. I think you would need both. Looking in the table, I couldn't figure out one code that would encompass all of that. You would need two for the interior connection and then the exterior connection. So that is my example that encompasses both the tip and the technique. Doing the case studies and then using visualization by drawing it out to figure out what that procedure looks like when you can't find a animation or a surgery video that can show you exactly what happened. Hopefully that was interesting. Hopefully it wasn't too long, but it is very helpful. I suggest you move on to that, onto using the case studies as soon as possible. Once you feel very comfortable going from index to tabular list, etc., in both the diagnosis codebook and the PCS codebook. This was very handy for me as I prep for the CCA. Keep in mind, later this week, I will have the video up of me taking the CCA exam. That's happening tomorrow. So I will try to get that video up later that day or a couple days later. So with that, you can subscribe to this channel. You will get all of the notifications on all the videos that I post. So you're always in the know and you will not miss out on that CCA video to see if I passed the exam or not. Also, you can comment below if you have any questions on this tip technique and example, or if you have any other questions or even ideas on other videos, please let me know. Also, like this video if you enjoyed this example and hearing this tip and technique. And I will definitely try to do more videos like this when I come across a good tip technique and example. Hopefully I can find some more because it was a lot of fun. And I'll see y'all later. Bye!